there is a glass on the hillside that old looks like so. And it sends out a light when I'm tossed about. Old to new, 
come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and I will receive you. And maybe we thought that the Lord was just being selfish. But the Bible says that the devil is the God of this world. He's in control of the order of this world. It also says that he is the prince of the powers of the air. Amen. He's in charge of the influence mm -hmm. uh, in the air. Another interpretation for the word spirit is wind. Amen. Spirits move in the midst of us. You hear voices in the air. There are feelings and emotions, good and bad, in the air. The devil is the prince of the influence of the He's in control of the majority of things that float in the air. And that stands to reason because the world as a whole denies Christ. The Bible says the world is blinded to Jesus. Why is that? Because the God of this world has done what? Blinded their minds. The influence of the air has blinded them. The spirits in the atmosphere has led them away from the knowledge of God. This is why you have to be careful where and how you fellowship. Because spirits move. They move from one object to another. They move from one person to another. They can move. And when you're constantly in company that is not uh, in tune with God, you need to be careful and have your whole arm on. Because at any time, a spirit will come and try to enter into your circumference. Amen. Try to move upon you. Try to feed you with thought. I don't know if many of you, any of you have felt this, but there have been times when I would be walking, and out of nowhere, a spirit would come and hit me. On a couple occasions, when that force hit me, it fell to the ground. And I was grateful for that. Now, the devil is an imitator. As the Holy Ghost comes like a rushing mighty wind, suddenly there came a sign from heaven on the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Ghost came suddenly. Also know that evil spirits move suddenly. But you know it's not the Holy Ghost because what it brings ain't holy. But these spirits, when you're walking around every day, when you're in the midst on your job, and when you go out to have entertainment, whatever you're doing, these spirits move so fast, you can't stop it. As a matter of fact, you don't even see it. You don't know it's on the move until it hits you. Amen. And if there's an open space in your spirit, it's coming in. And whatever it is that it brought, you're going to find yourself doing it. Except you pray it out of you. And the only reason it can enter in is because God allowed it. And the only reason God allowed it is because you need to be purged. I feel a virtue. You need to be cleansed. Let me reiterate that. Be careful when you're out there in that world. Understand that the devil, he's the prince of the power, the influences of the air. And at any time, these spirits will try to move upon you. And if you're not cleansed within, one may enter into your spiritual realm. And also with people. I was at a restaurant one day, and I got up to use the restroom, and there were a group of soldiers leaving, about eight soldiers and one woman. And as we were walking, they were on one side, I was on the other. A virtue, but it wasn't godly. A presence came from the young lady, and it came and it hit me. It hit me so hard that all of the soldiers stopped and they turned in battle position. That's how hard and sudden it was. And I turned because it felt like somebody hit me. And I turned, and every last one turned, and we stared and speak off. When I perceived where it came from, it came from the young sister, I said, do I know you? And she responded, do I know you? I said, well, I, I'm an international bishop. I thought I made a seat in the Air Force one day. So I said, I'm an international bishop. Then she said, well, I go to church too. You know, I go to this church, that church. And it lifted as she walked away. She saw an attraction. 
and that spirit on her hit me. But when it hit me, it fell to the ground. For that I was grateful. Didn't see it coming. But there was no open door. Now, if that spirit had entered into my spiritual realm, you understand me? That would have been a connection somehow. You, when it happens like that, you don't have to set it up. The demons will set it up. That's why you have to be careful as to what moves upon you. When you're walking in this world that whose God is the devil, you have to keep your ears open. Spiritual ears and your eyes. And you have to keep your spirit alert. You leave out the Holy Ghost is upon me. You leave out the house one way, you come back in another. Because something has got a hold of you before you enter in again. And even in your dreams, spirits would try to move upon you in your dreams. This is why we go to sleep and we ask God to give me peace. I lay me down and sleep. I awaken. The Lord awakens me. He keeps me. Anybody hearing me? Lord, protect my mind. The Holy Ghost helps us to bring other subjection. Every vain imagination and high thought that would exalt us above the mind of Christ. Beloved, make no mistake. There are influences out here that is not ordained of God, meaning they don't belong to God and they love to influence you. So be careful. That's the one reason why he said come out from among them. When the disciples got through preaching and they taught the disciples to get through work and they went to their own company. Where the spiritual atmosphere should be safe. The Bible says if you join yourself to a quarrelsome man, you become quarrelsome. What comes from the heart reaches the heart. You're feeling down and low, you're going through. And so you decide to mingle with a bunch of unbelievers who are not thinking about coming to God. Now you're gullible. Your spirit is open and there's a lust spirit upon one of them. That spirit comes and hits you and enters in. Now you leave, walk away feeling strange. Months up the road, day up the road, year up the road, you find yourself in a fornicating relationship. And you say to yourself, I don't know how this happened. It happened that day you were mingling and that presence came into you and you were not aware of what it was. Church say praise the Lord. That's why you have to be careful. The Bible talks about our motives. You can have a seed planted in your heart almost by any means where there's a spirit. Someone can make a turn being influenced by a spirit. Maybe a young man or a young lady can make a lewd, seductive turn by a spirit. Any other day, the turn wouldn't mean anything. But this day, a spirit says turn. And when they make a turn, that demon knows you're looking. And when it catches your eye, that seductive spirit enters into you. That's why the Bible says, be sober minded, because we have an adversary, the devil, devil seeking whom he may devour. Be what? Sober. The Holy Ghost is not a spirit of fear, but of a first sound mind to protect you from the influence and the powers of the air. So I'm just talking. Jesus prayed and he felt the presence coming and he knew that it was a deaf spirit because with it came the spirit of death. So now, what was the latest presence that's moved upon you? If it wasn't the Holy Ghost, discern what it was. If it's not of God, rebuke it. If it, entered, if it has entered into you, you received it, prepare yourself. Because you're going to be purged and you're about to be tried. And he released Judas that night, told him to do what he had to do. He said, if it be possible, pass this cup. Nevertheless, let your will be done. Angels came and they stood him. And they were in a place in a brook called Cedar, a keeper. Well, there was a guard. That word keeper means a, a dark and gloomy. It's amazing how God can 
find a garden for us in the midst of a dark and gloomy situation. Amen. He can do it. He may not always change the situation for you. He may not remove that trial, but believe me, he can give you a garden in the midst of it. And that light that shineth in dark places. And so I'm kind of talking about that trial today, uh, that place uh, in that dark and gloomy place. I want you to know that there's a garden there. You know, there's a place. Uh, what could that be? A place in the house where you go to pray. Uh, when you're feeling heavy, maybe there's a way you talk to God. A certain thing you do in the name of the Lord. And, 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 and you find peace. That's your garden. That, that, that's your hiding place in the midst of the storm. Jesus would go to Cedron or Kedron and, and, and he would take his disciples and he found a garden. The garden of Gethsemane. He found a garden there and his disciples would go there and they would rest. He can give you peace. Understand that in the midst of the storm. He can give you peace in the midst of your trial. Church, say praise the Lord. And he entered into that garden with his disciples. Verse 2. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted there with his disciples. He went there a lot with his disciples. And Judas knew the place. See, that's why it's important that you uh, watch your fellowship. It's why it's important that you don't allow the outside to influence you. Because many times, the devil, this scripture lets us know that God is all knowing and omnipotent. The scriptures would tell us Jesus knew all things, but the devil doesn't know all things. He only knows what he knows, you see what I'm saying? And the devil can't always find you. Sometimes it takes somebody to lead him to you. I feel the virtue. They didn't know how to find Jesus. He preached and taught every day in the open. Not one soldier, not one Pharisee, not one demon got into his private place. But now Judas because he was of them. He knew his secret hiding place. And the Bible says, and Judas also which betrayed him knew the place. Isn't that powerful? I wonder if anybody felt the power in this statement. Read that again. And Judas also, uh -huh. which betrayed him, uh -huh. knew the place. Now, uh, if anybody would, please say, Lord, forgive me. And then say, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to say, Lord, keep a hedge around me. I appreciate that. The reason why I said that is because, Lord, can you feel the weight, sometimes the fear or the heartache of somebody you poured your heart out, you told them the most outrageous personal things about you, you trusted them, and they betray you. They know how to get to you because they know the place. They know. We don't want to be like that. We want to be trustworthy when people trust you. You don't want to use that to bring the enemy in. Judas knew the place. I know how to get to him. I know how to hurt him. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I didn't mean to hurt you, but what did you expect? You felt the presence on you was evil. You said yourself, you got a bad spirit, and upon that spirit, you're going to reveal everything that somebody trusted you with. That's why I say, Lord, put a hedge around me for them that betray you. And they know, nobody can get to you, but they know the place. They know what to say. They know what you told them. They may come and try to hurt you, but God put a hedge around them. Block it. Let them fall in the ditch. Block it. You didn't say you were right. You were just trusting. You were confessing. Trying to get it off your chest. Got to tell somebody. 
And why did you tell him or her? She's among us. He's among us. We walk, talk, we sleep, eat together. How did I know the prince of the powers of the air moved upon him at the dinner table? The disciples didn't know. The Bible says, and the devil at the dinner, at the dinner table, said the devil entered into Judas. At the dinner table, anybody hear me? Amen. Sitting around the family. The reason why I, I take this serious is because I used to give Bible studies in the communities around here. And I'll never forget a devil while I was preaching moved upon a young man and I felt it. So I began to speak about how things fix your mind. How things try to fix you. And I kept preaching until it lifted. And after the service, he said, you know, preacher, that was amazing when you said how, you know, things come and press your mind. But he was thought, he said, something was on me. But eventually it lifted. He had no idea that a demon had just got his mind. But I saw it when the Spirit moved upon him. And by the Holy Ghost, I addressed it. You feel me? Whenever you're dealing in a real spiritual atmosphere, y'all hear me? You do best be sober-minded. Because one call on the speak can cost you your very soul. Especially when you're preaching a message and you're preaching truth that the devil doesn't like. You know how the devil got Judas? Anybody knows? Because he got angry. The Lord rebuked him. And he got mad. And the devil took advantage of that. And entered a full of virtue. And entered into him. Well how bad was it? Bad enough to betray his, his Savior? Bad enough to jeopardize his whole church? It was just that bad. Judas, read verse 3. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, coming thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. You come to fellowship, what do you bring in with you? The Spirit of the Lord moved upon me. I wish you all would listen to this because it could be prophetic. Today, tomorrow, you may walk into the same situation and you miss it and it causes you pain unbearable. You can't imagine. Listen, let me break it down to you. All you all see is Judas coming with soldiers, weapons, and torches. That's all you see, but I see more than that. I see Judas coming with a change of behavior. He ain't looking right. He's not talking right. Praise the Lord, Brother Brian. How are you coming to me? Something's different. God, give me eyes to see. Give me eyes to see. Something's not right. I, I know you said praise the Lord, but I see torches. I see weapons. And what is this band of soldiers? I, I see something with you that you don't normally have. You don't normally come with a band of soldiers. You don't normally dress, look, act, talk this way. That's what I see, son, in that band of soldiers and the torches. And, 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 and while the torches, you know how to get here. While the strange questions and the things you're saying don't add up. What are you trying to say? Even God said to Cain, Cain was wrong. Cain said nothing. God said to change. Your consciousness is different. I feel the virtue. You go to hug. Normally you re are received. But now there's a resistance. Can't hardly see it, but you feel it. Recognize the change. I feel the